In today's video, we are going to practice some yoga where we focus on either relaxing the pelvic floor for reverse kegels while we practice or contracting the pelvic floor. And the decision as to whether you work on reverse kegels or contractions, actually strengthening the pelvic floor, is based on your pelvic floor. So if you know you suffer from hypertonicity, where you have pelvic pain and tension, then you're going to do reverse kegels. And if you know that you are suffering from conditions where there is some hypotonicity, maybe you have stress incontinence or pelvic organ prolapse, then you're going to focus on contracting the pelvic floor. Welcome to The Flower Empowered. So we're going to start our yoga today just on the mat. We don't need any props for this sequence. And we're going to start from a standing position. So coming to the front of your mat and setting your intention for the practice. So if you know that you have a condition where there is hypertonicity of the pelvic floor, I want you to focus on every inhalation, relaxing the pelvic floor. And if you have a problem where you have hypotonicity of the pelvic floor, so where you have, say, um, incontinence, or if, you're, if you have a pelvic organ prolapse and you're trying to build up a little bit of strength and support, then you can work on contracting on every exhalation. So you decide, you can of course do both, you can relax on the inhalation, contract on the exhalation, that is how I will instruct this, but you set your intention at the beginning of the practice and carry that throughout. So big toes come together, heels slightly apart, stand nice and tall, relax the shoulders, so we start just letting the arms go, letting the shoulders go, and we just create a gentle um, activation of the lower abdominals and a gentle activation of the pelvic floor if you're going to work on strength. Otherwise, I just want you to allow everything to relax. So let's just connect with our breath. So take an inhalation and exhale. And the next inhale, we're going to bring the arms up. And we're going to exhale and we're just going to roll down. So just allow the shoulders to come down. Just take one vertebra at a time. The hips come back a little, just bend the knees a little. Allow the head to come all the way down. Inhale, we're going to straighten the legs and look forward and come as high as you need to here to have a nice neutral spine. Then bend your legs, plant your hands, step it back. You're going to drop your knees, your chest and your chin to the floor. Then we're going to roll forward, so sending the shoulders forward, keep the elbows close to the body, lift the chest. And then we're going to roll over the toes and we're going to come back. You're just going to allow your head to rest on the floor, keep your toes down, and just take a little moment here. And I'm just going to tie the hair out of the way, if I can do it without tying the microphone into the hair. <laughs> okay. So from this down position, you're going to take your right arm and you're going to thread the needle. So bring the right arm underneath the left and just gaze over to the left. So the, the arm is resting, back of the palm is on the floor. And just take a moment here. So inhaling to relax your pelvic floor. Exhaling, just take a little mini contraction. Inhale to relax your pelvic floor. Exhale, taking a little contraction. One last time. Inhale to relax the pelvic floor and exhale for a little pelvic floor contraction. Then you're going to gently press into that front hand, release the arm, you're going to place the right hand down and now we're going to thread the left arm under. And as you do this, rest your head. You're going to inhale, relaxing the pelvic floor and exhale, gentle contraction. Inhale, relaxing the pelvic floor. And exhale, gentle contraction. One more time, we inhale to relax the pelvic floor. And we exhale, gentle contraction. Then we're going to press into the right hand, bring the left hand forward. 
You're going to come to an all fours position. You can just turn your toes so that they're flat. And we're going to just take a few little cat and cow breaths here. So you're going to inhale and you're going to start from the tailbone to the neck and round everything down. And then you're going to exhale and curl everything in. Then inhale, relaxing your pelvic floor as you go for your movement and exhale, curling everything in and contracting the pelvic floor. Inhale, lengthen everything, relax everything. Exhale, curl it all together, contract pelvic floor. Inhale, lengthen everything and exhale, contract the pelvic floor. And then just release the hips for a moment. We're just going to take some little hip circles. So I want you to imagine now that you are stirring the femur, the head of the femur, the ball joint in the hip socket. And we're trying to just feel into the hips. And as you do this, exaggerate the movement and you can close your eyes if you want to and really feel into your pelvic floor. Just ask your body, what do you need right now? What movement are you looking for? And then you're going to stop and take the movement to the opposite side. So rolling the other way around. You'll notice a slight change when you do that. And you can keep the eyes closed if you want and just roll the hips. So getting into the hips, nice and softly. And then we're going to come to the all fours position. So making sure shoulder is over, elbow is over wrist. You want to press the knuckle of your index finger into the floor, gently grip with your hands. There's a little bit of weight in the heels. Turn out your toes, just lift your knees off the floor. Press your hands to take your stomach to your knees and then lengthen your spine. So take your hips up and try to get a nice long spine. Then just we just walk this little dog. So just take a few steps here to warm everything up. Beautiful. And then we're going to come to a still downward facing dog. So the feet, they're going to be planted. You want to turn your steady bones up towards the ceiling. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Make sure the arms are shoulder distance apart. The feet are hip distance apart. Sitting bones are turning up. Engage your quads. Draw in the low belly gently. And then breathe. So as you inhale, relax everything. Pelvic floor, lower belly, everything is soft. As you exhale, gently drawing everything in, just a subtle contraction, not the strongest you could possibly do. Then relax everything on the inhalation and then contract everything on the exhalation. Inhale, relax, low belly and the pelvic floor. Exhale, contract. Inhale once more, we relax. And then as we exhale, this time we're going to bend the knees, look forward between the hands, and a nice big bend in the knees as you walk the feet forward. So here we're going to just keep the knees bent as much as you need to, to allow the stomach to rest onto the legs. Just grab opposite elbows, just let the head hang for a moment. You can rock a little here if you want to. Just nod your head yes. Shake your head no, just making sure we're not holding tension in the neck. <clears throat> then we're going to roll up, just release the hands. Use your feet to take your upper body up. And you're uncurling the spine one vertebra at a time. The last thing to come up is the head. Just bring the arms up, gaze towards the thumbs and exhale, Samus DTE. Okay, so <clears throat> from here, we're going to do a couple of standing asanas, so some nice standing poses. We're going to start with the Trikonasana pose. So for that pose, we're going to start with our feet uh, together, big toes are touching. We're going to take a big step back with the right leg. So there's about one leg distance between your feet. So if I were to measure my leg and I were to drop it down, then that's the distance I have between my feet. This is a nice comfortable distance. We're going to take the hips. Imagine you have two little pointers coming out from your hip bones and we're going to turn them to face the side. Now the shoulders remain over the hips. We're going to bring the hands up onto the shoulders, point the elbows to the ends of the mat, release the hands out and then turn the gaze over the front fingers. So it's the left fingers that are towards the front right now. And then we're going to reach, reach, reach. And as you're reaching forward, send your hips backwards. So reach the fingers forwards, the hips backwards, keep the legs straight. And when you can't reach forward anymore, 
turn your palms to face the side and allow your arms to come down. Now, what we want here is a nice long body. So the body, as it comes down, stays long. We are not going to shorten one side and lengthen the other. This is not what we want. We want to stay long. And to do that, you have to keep sending the hips backwards. So come to your position. Now you can use a yoga block to raise the floor, or you can grab onto your big toe with your peace sign fingers if you're all the way down. And then once you are in a comfortable position and you feel you have balance, then you can turn your gaze up. Now with this upper arm, just put your arm on your shoulder for a moment. Make sure your elbow is pointing up towards the ceiling and release the hand. Now in this position, we're going to relax the pelvic floor as we inhale and then contract as we exhale. Relax on the inhalation and contract on the exhalation. Then look down towards your feet and then press into your feet to bring your body back up. We're going to turn the feet and we're going to take the position in the opposite side. So the first thing we do is we turn the toes. So front toe is facing the, the short end of the mat. The back toe is at about a 45 degree angle. We take the hips, we're going to orientate them sideways a little. Take the hands onto the shoulders, point the elbows out to the sides, release the hands, and then you're reaching out with your fingertips. Then as we send the fingers forward, we send the hips backwards. And we reach, 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 as far forward as we can. And when we can't go forward anymore, turn the hand sideways, looking down towards your feet, and take that hand down. And it can be anywhere along that line. And if you're in the full expression, you can grab the big toe with your peace sign fingers. But make sure that you keep that hip nice and open, keep sending the hips in that direction, making sure the elbow is pointing straight up before releasing the hand. And then you can gaze up if you have balance. If not, you can keep your gaze towards the floor. And nice, shorten the top side, lengthen the bottom side. Inhalation, relax the pelvic floor. Exhalation, contract the pelvic floor. Inhalation, relaxing the pelvic floor. Exhalation, contracting. Then gazing down towards the feet, releasing the toe. You have it coming back up, come to the center. And then we're going to take pose on the opposite side. So this time we're going to go for a warrior pose. Now you may need to come just a little bit wider with your feet for this because we want to get nice and deep when we bend the knee. The outside edge of your back foot should be in line with the back of the mat. And then you're going to, again, open your hips to the long end of the mat. We're going to bend that front knee. Now, when you bend the knee, you may need to go a little wider in order to get down nice and low. And when you come down, make sure the knee isn't falling in or falling out. You want the knee exactly over the ankle. And then you want to try to turn the hips. And the way to do that is use the strength of your leg here. So you're going to have to contract on the external rotators to keep that knee there. And then you're going to really strongly engage the quad on this leg, push into the outside edge of the back foot. Then just check that your shoulders are still over your hips. You don't want to lean forward or backward. You want to be centered. Let's take the shoulders so that they point towards the two different ends of the mat. Release the arms nice and deep here. Strong, tall, gaze over the front fingertips. And then we inhale to relax the pelvic floor. We exhale, gentle contraction. We inhale to relax. We're simultaneously expanding through the fingertips. We exhale to contract, strong legs here. Inhale to relax and exhale to contract. Then we're going to straighten the back knee. Just turn the feet so that you can take the position on the opposite side. Bending the knee, making sure when you bend the knee that you keep the shoulders over the hips. The hips move in that direction. You make sure that you're not falling in or out. The knee is stacked over the ankle. We're trying to get a 90 degree here. It's quite hard. Press, engage the quad and press into the outside edge of the foot. Make sure that the elbows are pointing and then you gaze over the front fingers and stretch the fingertips away from each other. Inhale as you relax your pelvic floor, exhale to contract. Inhale to relax the pelvic floor, exhale to contract. This is hard. <laughs> Inhale to relax the pelvic floor, 
and exhale to contract. Then we're going to straighten the front knee. You can take your hands onto your hips and then just bring the feet closer together. So again, we're looking for about one leg distance. If I were to measure my leg, it would be the same distance. So I almost have an equilateral triangle going on here. And then we're going to place the hands onto the hips. Now we're going to now stretch our hamstrings. And it's very important when you come forward to do this, that you don't collapse your back. You want to have a nice tall spine. So imagine there's a string on your heart that is going to be pulling up that way. Take your hands onto your waist, bring your elbows back, open your chest up, inhalation, and then exhale, nice strong quads, contract the quads and allow yourself to pivot from the waist. So you're folding forward here and as you fold forward, keep a nice long spine and come as far forward as you can, then release the hands to the floor. We're going to inhale to lengthen the spine and we're going to exhale to fold forward. Now you can use blocks here if you need to take the body up a little bit. The, um, make sure that you're contracting strongly on the quads because that helps to release the backs of the legs. And just relax here, we're going to do an inhalation as we relax the pelvic floor and an exhalation to contract. Inhalation to relax the pelvic floor and an exhalation to contract. Inhalation to relax the pelvic floor and an exhalation to contract. Then we're going to lengthen the spine as we gaze forward, release the hands onto the waist, use strong legs, press into the feet to take your body back up. Then let's just heel toe until the feet are just a little bit wider than hip distance. Then we're going to put the hands onto the waist and we're going to squat down. Now release the hands, take the back of the arm into the insides of the legs. We're going to take the hands together and we're going to lengthen the spine and gently push the legs. So you're squeezing your arms with your legs and you're pressing into your legs with your arms. This really works the legs quite strongly. Lengthen nice and tall. So try to almost grow up out of your hips in this position. And then we're going to take an inhalation, relax the pelvic floor, exhalation to contract. Inhalation to relax the pelvic floor, exhalation to contract. Inhalation to relax the pelvic floor and an exhalation to contract. Now we're going to go for a little bit of a twist. So we're going to also do these relaxes and contra contractions in the twisted position. So just take a little bit further around on your shoulder against your leg. Place your hand in the middle of the floor, just a little bit in front of you. And then inhale, the arm up and exhale, contract. Inhale, relax the pelvic floor. Exhale, contract. Inhale, relax the pelvic floor. And exhale, contract. One more time, we inhale to relax the pelvic floor and we exhale to contract. Then we're gonna come down and we're going to take our twist on the other side. So again, going a little deeper so that you get the back of your shoulder onto the leg, press your hand onto the floor. And the twist comes from the rib cage, from the thoracic spine. So inhale, bringing the arm up. Ooh. See, I'm not as flexible on this side. Exhale to relax. Inhale to contract the pelvic floor. Exhale to relax. Inhale to contract the pelvic floor. Exhale to relax. And one last time. We inhale to relax the pelvic floor. We exhale to contract. And let's bring the arm down. Now, we're going to come to a kneeling position. So just allow yourself to take your knees around. We're going to just allow the feet to be flat on the floor. And from here, we're going to release first the right foot from the floor. And you're just going to rest your foot so the whole leg is straight here. We're going to engage the quad. And then we're going to place the right hand onto the right hip. And then we're going to reach the left arm over. And we're trying to send everything in that direction. So you want everything to go left and you're going to lift the rib cage, create space in the lower back and reach. And as you're doing this, if you're comfortable doing this, then you're going to relax the pelvic floor as you inhale and contract as you exhale. You're also lifting the ribs away from the hips as you inhale and reach as you exhale. So you're trying to get deeper into the tissues along the side. You should feel a really deep stretch all the way through to the hand. 
from the knee. You can put a blanket under your knees in this position if you need to. And then we're going to come back and we're going to this time place the left hand on the floor and then imagine a nice long line of energy coming all the way from the foot. You're going to send this hip up and reach the right arm over the head. So inhale, lengthen and reach all the way from toes to fingertips. And if you can, relax your pelvic floor as you inhale, contract as you exhale. Relax as you inhale and contract as you exhale. Then bring your hand onto your waist, take yourself all the way up. I'm going to take that knee back in, stabilize in the middle. Again, if you need a blanket under your knees, you can just place one there. So we're going to this time release the left leg. So we're pointing the toe, but we're keeping the foot on the floor for now. And then you're going to feel, I want you to feel like you're keeping this hip lifted a little bit. And then as you inhale to lift your rib cage away from your hips, you want to reach the arm over the head and you want to send your hips in that direction as you reach over in the opposite direction and feel a really long stretch through the side of the body. And if you can, relax your pelvic floor as you inhale and contract as you exhale. Keep lifting the rib cage away from the hips. Keep trying to lengthen the tissues in the side of your body. Nice, strong quad. Inhaling to relax and exhaling to contract. And then you're going to take that right hand, place it on the floor, bring the left arm up and reach all the way from the toes to the fingertips. Inhaling to relax your pelvic floor, exhaling to contract. Inhaling to relax and exhaling to contract. Take the arm, place it on the waist, bring the knees back in. And if you need to here, you can take a child's pose. So I'm just going to turn to the side for my child's pose. Resting the head, letting everything be soft. So just taking a little moment here, relax your shoulders, relax your hips. And then we're going to do one more round where we will work on our contraction and relaxation of the pelvic floor. So for this, we're going for a half bridge pose. So you're going to lay flat on your back. You're going to make sure that your heels are close enough that you can just about touch them with your fingers. And once you can get to that position, you make sure that the knees stay in line with the hips. So you don't want them to open as you're practicing. You want to keep them there, hands along the side of the body. You're going to roll the spine to press into the feet, lift up the hips. And once you get the hips up, you can interlock the fingers behind the back and walk the shoulders in a little closer to each other. Very important that you keep the head straight here. I looked at the camera, that's not a good thing to do. And as you inhale, lift the rib cage towards the chin. And as you exhale, you're gonna hold it there. And then we're going to relax the pelvic floor as we inhale and contract if you can while we exhale. It's a difficult position to do contraction. Inhale to relax and exhale to contract. Then release the hands, lower it down. Just take the feet a little bit wide, allow the knees to drop in. That releases the low back. You can place your hands on your low belly. Just take a little moment, let the hips relax, let the pelvic floor relax, let the shoulders relax, everything nice and soft. And we're getting ready. We're going to do one more round of this one. So taking the feet back in line with the sitting bones, the legs are hip width apart. You're not going to let them open. Have an imaginary block between your knees or you can even put a block between your knees to make sure that they don't open. Hands alongside of your body. Just make sure that you can still reach your heels and then press into your hips to lift them up. Interlock the fingers, walk the shoulders a little closer to each other. And then on the inhalation, you lift the rib cage towards the chin. On the exhalation, you hold it there. And on the inhalation, relaxing the pelvic floor as you lift the rib cage. And as you exhale, contract the pelvic floor as you lift your hips higher. Inhale, relax your pelvic floor. Exhale, contract. Make sure the knees aren't falling out. Inhale, relax and exhale, contract. Then release the hands, allow the hips to come down, allow the shoulders to come out, and just give yourself 
a little hug. So you can rock a little from side to side, swap the arm that's on top. This helps to maintain balance in the body. And we're going to go for a little happy baby, happy husband, happy lover, whatever your orientation, <laughs> there is a version for you. So just allow yourself to rock a little here. You want to keep the shoulders on the floor. The shoulder blades are nice and flat. You want to try to get the sacrum onto the floor. You want to kick a little into the hands, pull a little into the feet. It's a nice solid pose. And then just give yourself a little hug. We're going to rock ourselves up. We're going to go for a little hip opener here. So for this hip opener. We're going to just seal the knee to start and then we're going to release the foot. I'm going to try to place the foot in the elbow and then just give everything a little hug. And if you can't get it in like that, you can just take it in and you can just rock a little here. So eventually you should be able to take the leg all the way into the core. So, okay, opposite side, we're going to bring the knee in, hug it into the chest. I'm going to go for the opposite side. So again, we're giving it a little hug. And when you're doing this, you're getting in to the piriformis and a lot of the muscles that are in deep underneath the, um, the, the glutes. So these are muscles that are responsible for your external rotation of the hip. And we're getting in and giving them a little stretch and just a little bit of a hug. And then we're going to release the leg. Just give the legs a little bit of a shake. And we're going to go for one more pose before we um, finish, and that is a twist, but it's a twist with a cross in the legs. Now this is a little bit of a deeper twist than just bringing the legs over. So when you're, when you're going to come into this position, you're going to start by crossing the legs here. So we'll take the left leg over the right leg, bring your hands onto the floor, shift your hips a little bit over to the left, Keep the shoulders nice and flat on the floor and allow the knees to come over to the right. And as you do this, you want to make sure that the shoulders aren't lifting. You can adjust a little if you need to, but if your shoulders are lifting, it's better to unlock the legs and you can even straighten a leg if you need to. So work within the confines of your own body. The cross leg twist is a very deep twist. We're going to try to relax here. So as much as possible, release the tension through the spine. Nice and soft. Letting go. So everything is soft. We're not doing any contractions here. We're just trying to be very relaxed and very open. And bring the head back to the center. Bring the legs back into the center. Align your hips so that they're straight again. You can hug yourself a little here and just make sure that your hips are back in line with your shoulders. Everything is all in a nice, neat little ball. And then you're going to cross the right leg over the left leg. And when you do that, just press your hands into the floor, shift your hips a little bit over to the right, drop the hips over to the left, making sure that the shoulders stay relaxed on the floor. And then you can hold onto the leg if you need to. I'm lying on my microphone. Just try to relax as much as you can in this twisted position. And as you let go here, if you need to release the legs from being crossed, you can do that. You just want to try as much as possible to let go. So relaxing the pelvic floor, relaxing the shoulders, and just letting the legs go. And see mine want to move away from me a little, holding a bit of tension in this side of the body. We always have a disparity between left and right. If you consider that if you're right-handed or left-handed, you're going to have a dominant side <clears throat> versus if you're ambidextrous, which is not very usual. Bring the head back into the center. Take your hands in, take the legs in. Oh. Realign everything. 
So that's quite a tough twist when you have the cross in the legs. It really kind of challenges the body. And we're really looking here to get into all of the tissues. Now you can either go for a Savasana now, but I'm actually going to come up into a, a short seated meditation to finish. So if you want to do your meditation lying down in Savasana, or if you prefer to take child's pose, please do that. Otherwise you're very welcome to come up and join me in a little seated meditation to finish. So find a comfortable seat, just allow the palms of the hands to rest on the back of the legs and bring the index finger and the thumb to touch. Just allow the eyes to gently gaze down towards the point on the floor that is easiest for the eyes to rest upon. And then I just want you to start to notice your breath. So letting go of control over your breath remembering the intention that you set at the beginning of the class. Whatever your intention was, just hold that in your heart. Allow your hips to be heavy. Allow your shoulders to relax. And just allow your body to be effortlessly stacked. Allow your eyes to be effortlessly resting. The thumb and the finger on each hand, the mudra, the chin mudra that you're holding, just allow that to be effortless too. So abandon all effort, surrender into the body, allow the breathing to be natural and soft. So not forcing anything here, just allowing yourself to let go. bring your hands together in front of your heart. We have finished with our practice today. It can be very nice to take a longer meditation at the end. I like to practice after the strong yoga, the pelvic floor relaxation, so the yin yoga, and then yoga nidra can be very nice. So if it's late in the day when you do your practice, start with your strong practice, then do your relaxation, and then do your nidra and sleep. Or if you start early in the day, begin with the nidra, then your yin yoga, your relaxation, and then your active yoga, because then you're energized for the day. Whatever you choose to do, remember to talk about pelvic floor dysfunction. If we talk about these things, we can really change the way things are for those people that suffer in silence. Together, we can and will make a difference.